and I have to do this one over because the mailman came and drove the dogs crazy. Anyway, if you are watching these videos, you already know how powerful D3 is. You know what you can do with it. But writing everything yourself from scratch, well, can take forever. And the community is really active and making some great uh, plugins and reusable charts. So I want to show you one of these uh, reusable charts and talk a little bit about what it's good for because it's great. And then also how you can use it in tributary and use some features of tributary to make playing with uh, exploring plugins easier. So yeah, this chart is called Parallel Coordinates. It's by my homie Kai Chang. Um, he's been working on it for, for a little while now and it's really coming together. So let's do it. All right, so first let me tell you a little bit about parallel coordinates, um, just so you have an idea of you know, what it's good for um, and how you might be able to use it. Parallel coordinates shows you essentially the columns of your uh, data set, if you have a tabular data set, and each line here is one row in your data set. So this example has a bunch of cars, and you know, each car has some properties like how many cylinders it has, um, its economy in miles per gallon, displacement, horsepower, weight, uh, acceleration, what year it was manufactured in, right? So if you look at all the cars manufactured in the 70s, uh, distributions all over the place, if you look at just the cars made in the uh, early 70s, mostly mostly four and eight cylinders, you can look at just the cars the four cylinders made in the 70s. Um, see that they all had low displacement. The eight cylinder cars had really high displacement and power, um, but their economy, of course, is all below 20 miles per gallon. So, you know, you can really explore a data set, um, get into, find some interesting patterns, and, and go from there. So, this component is actually really straightforward to use, so let's use it. And all we need is to have this JavaScript, and then we can start calling um, its AP, uh, the Parallel Coordinates API to create our chart. So there's a feature in Tributary where you can add external scripts. I'm just going to call it Paracord, so the name doesn't really matter. Uh, just paste the link in there, hit enter, and now we can use it in our code. Uh, the other thing we're going to want to do is get this style sheet. And I'm, you know, you can make new files in Tributary. You just give it a CSS file name. It will insert this style into the DOM. So to use parallel coordinates, let's go down to this getting started. A simple example. We need to make a div like this. An example here. Um, we can do that in here with HTML as well. So if I just say and let her, you know. Uh, example.html, um, paste that in there, that'll be there, um, you can inspect this element, oh, I almost forgot, we need to set this to be div rendering, uh, html rendering, so that our display is a div and it has this in it, the default in tributary is to give you SVG to render and see what parallel coordinates renders, um, Canvas and SVG for you. So let's get this like simple, super simple, sample data set, um, and just copy this code, and boom, we have ourselves a uh, little parallel coordinates. So you know, one nice thing we can do is uh, select the example, uh, set the style, let's set the width. To be um, like so. So this is sort of uh, tributary.sw is a default value that gives us the width of our display. We can also set the height to the, the whole height of the thing. And it's pretty stretched out. There's not that much data here. So let's get some real data. I've already downloaded the Cars that CSV here. I'll show you just how I did that. I went to this brushing example, click this, download it again, um, 
just open it with text edit, copy paste this. Tributary now also supports CSV files, so if I just do cars.csv, paste my data in there, uh, that works. Um, and so here we can just say data equals tributary.cars. Alright, so now we have our cars data in here. So this works just by like anytime you have a, a file name here, you just get tributary dot whatever the file name is without the CSV. And it just gives you the data. So let's get some of the other nice features from the uh, the parallel coordinates API. We can just scroll down here a bit. We can make the dimensions reorderable. So I believe it's just that reorderable. And then we should be able to, yeah, move our dimensions around. Because in parallel coordinates, you actually, what you look at is the relationship between two dimensions. And, you know, sometimes you want to find out is there a relationship so if you reorder them you can see um, like here that uh, high economy correlates to low displacement and vice versa you see this crossing over suggests that uh, we can also add brushable and that allows us to filter with the brush so we can just look at subsets of our data and then subsets of subsets of subsets and you know, see what we find. So this shows us like all the cars that have slow acceleration, low power. None of the high power have slow, slow acceleration, but there are some. Oh, this is displacement. Let's get rid of displacement. Yeah, so you can get filtered down just a few cars. And the, let's talk about one more thing, which is color. So we can set. Um, here, the color we can set to whatever we want. Oh, I think I have to do this before render. There we go. So we can, you know, play the color however we want. There's also an alpha. Um, so we can like, turn the alpha up and down. There's some interesting stuff with these compositing modes, which is nice. So um, let's try lighter. Or what was it? Uh, compositing. I think it's dot mode. Uh, composite. Dot composite. Dot composite. And let's say lighter. So that means that when things overlap, they get lighter. So if we look at displacement we have this correlation so you can kind of see it brighten up there. Um, the last thing I want to show is the colors, data driven colors. So I'm going to copy this color scale function here and then talk about how it works. Oops, this not statistical coloring, we can just do it uh, data driven color here. So this is coloring based on the economy of the car, which goes from like 9 to 50 or so. So you'll see here the domain of this color scale is manually set. To do it the right way you would get it from your data. Um, but then the way to actually hook it up is make a, a function here which will copy. And I'm going to call this, you know, color is function D. And this is basically when we pass in this color function to parallel coordinates, it's going to call this with every line. And then we're going to use the economy, the value of the economy um, for, for each uh, row, each line, and pass it through this color scale. And then if we were to here 
instead do um, you know these kinds of colors then we can actually play with how we want it to look positive So there we have parallel coordinates. Um, enjoy. And my home is still you know, making stuff. Alright, so I'll catch you guys in the next video.